Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I'm here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And don't you know that superheroes are problematic? That's right. They are problematic. And just like cops, we need to get rid of all superheroes or at least reform them in movies and on TV and in video games. Like Captain Marvel? Like Captain Marvel? No, I think she's exempt. Uh-uh, uh, because I, she took the part away from a person of color. Uh, ooh, uh, yeah, I don't know. We're going to talk about this article on time. Time of all places. This isn't the Mary Sue. This is Time Magazine. Well, they're com. all desperate for hits. So. They're all desperate. So before we get into it, please subscribe for more pop culture, news, views, and rants. Guys, we're at almost 125,000 subs. Thank you for that. Make sure you hit the bell for notifications because a lot of you are saying you're not getting notifications. And I have to wonder if it isn't because I talked about censorship on Reddit, Twitch, and YouTube the other day. Mm -hmm. Oh, we, the people have been having trouble before that. Yeah, it, it just doesn't work. So make sure you hit the bell. Check back often on the channel. I'm working on another solution right now on clownfishtv.com to give you notifications. So you can actually go to the website to get the notifications when new videos upload. And I'll have more information on that hopefully uh, later this week. So before we get into this, I want to give a shout out to Fleece Johnson, the booty warrior. Ooh, booty warrior. The booty warrior. <laughs> That's fun. Fleece Johnson, the booty warrior, who gave us a tip on Twitter, thank you so much for that. This, again, coming from Time Magazine, uh, talking about superheroes being problematic, talking about uh, racism, and I just want to put this out there. Again, don't contact her, but this is who's writing the article. Okay. Just, just, get, just keep this in mind as we read the article, and she talks more about black representation, because this does seem to be very... Uh, very much par for the course, doesn't it? Yeah. White women speaking for minorities. That's right. Nothing new under the sun. Uh, anyway, she's a blue check, so you have to listen to her. Uh, but don't contact her. I don't. This is Time Magazine, though. We can talk about this. We're re-examining. Well, don't put stupid things out. Yeah, don't put stupid things out, and then we don't have to comment on them. Uh, we're re-examining how we portray cops on screen. Now it's time to talk about superheroes. So they're talking about uh, superheroes and how you know they don't have to obey the law. That's true because Captain Marvel mugged a guy and that was completely fine. That that's that is true. That is true. So they're talking about cops and, and uh, the good guy cop narratives are rarely balanced out with stories of systemic racism in the criminal justice system. So she goes on to say again, just keep in mind, keep in mind, <laughs> the bad guys they pursue are often people of color. Their characters underdeveloped beyond their criminality. That isn't true. In this period of reckoning, period of reckoning. <laughs> The long-running show Cops and widely watched live PD have been canceled. Actors and writers who contributed to police procedurals are criticizing their own work and donating money to defense funds. Oh, I'm sure they were told they had to. Parents are protesting benevolent portrayals of canine cops in the children's show Paw Patrol. What and, the hell? And uh, they're talking about a law enforcement accountability project. But as we engage in this long overdue conversation about law enforcement, it's high time we also talk about the most popular characters in film, the ones who decide the parameters of justice and often enact them with violence, superheroes. Which this was actually a topic in the Avengers movies. Well, they actually bring that up. Uh, she brings that up in, in Captain America. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, but but she says they're cops with capes. Cops with capes. Yeah, I never got that from uh, Punisher. <laughs> Just, you know. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're beacons of inspiration. Protesters dressed as Spider-Man and Batman have turned up at Black Lives Matter's uh, demonstrations. Yet, and yet, what are superheroes except cops with capes? How dare you people dress as those characters and show up to the protests? Cops with capes who enact Terrible justice people. with their powers. With a few notable exceptions, uh, Wonder Woman. That's the only one she has. Uh, more on those later. Most superhero stories star straight white men who either function as an extension of a broken U.S. justice system or vigilantes without any checks on their powers. Of course, he said most because that's that's not true. Right. Usually they have some sort of relationship with the government. The Avengers work for S.H.I.E.L.D. Batman takes orders from Gotham Police Commissioner Gordon. Not, not really. really. And even the villainous members of the Suicide Squad execute government orders in exchange for commuted prison sentences. And when superheroes function outside the justice system, they're sometimes idolized by police because they're able to skirt the law to get the job done. Well, a lot of times the story is the police are trying to catch them because they are out there doing things they shouldn't be doing. 
Uh, so now we're we're now she's talking about the Punisher because you know obviously with the Punisher uh, who's the one that has the most bloody whatever the Punisher clearly we have to use that one as well because cops I guess have been using the Punisher logo oh, on yes, stuff yes so we have to talk about that um, they said that it does come up briefly in Captain America Civil War and uh, Dawn of Justice but they said you know once they they get past that they get just get into CGI fist fights. Uh, what's more, given that the creators and stars of these movies have historically been white men, it's hardly surprising that so few reckon, reckon with the issues of systemic racism, let alone sexism, homophobia, transphobia, and other forms Basically, of bigotry. Basically, the whole damn list of things they throw at everybody if they don't agree with them. You know that one. Oh, God. A new kind of hero, Black Panther. Might I remind you? That Black Panther was actually created by two white men. Yeah, but that doesn't count. That uh, doesn't count. But they, they actually, uh, she actually brings up that Blade was problematic because it was directed and written by white men. So basically, let's th 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 um, th sum this whole damn article up with. Um, superhero movies are shit because it's white guys. That's basically this entire article, um, I think, in a nutshell. That's basically this whole this whole article seems to be in a nutshell. Um, superheroes would be fine if they weren't white and they weren't men. Is that basically what this article's about? Because that's for I'm listening, reading the when you read this, and that's basically what I'm getting from this. It's it's basically yes. If superheroes weren't white men in positions of uh, law enforcement, but any superhero is going to be in a position where you know they're going to have to act, and whether or not they have permission. Well, if we're talking about Black Panther, I just want to point out that uh, you know he was acting to protect his country, which I guess could be kind of like law enforcement. Well, so is Captain America. Right, and and uh, the villain. Uh, the villain was kind of a lot of people have likened him to a sort of SJW terrorist, mm -hmm. you know, Killmonger. I mean, his motivation was pretty, pretty iffy. What is her damn point? She doesn't really seem to have a point. She, she just wanted to complain and, and yes. uh, article on time. Okay. Yes. Basically, uh, we're talking about Black Panther, talking about how, uh, you know, again, we're going into talking about uh, the oppression that black people have, have felt uh, throughout uh, the decades. And uh, speaking for, right, right, for minorities, because right, right. this is how this these journalists uh, operate, right? Um, so they talk about that, and I don't know what this has to do with cops. Um, so we get down to Miles Morales, and she's disappointed that Miles Morales, uh, that the original Spider-Verse movie didn't focus more on his race. The second one should. Wait, why would that matter? Because this is all people like her are obsessed with, politics, race, uh, that is it. In fact, if you go to her Twitter profile, she basically writes about culture, society, and feminism. God. Well, that's all you need to know. Right. So I, I think what shocks me is this is a Mary Sue article posted on time.com. Yep. This is the mainstreaming of the Mary Sue. You know, that that's that's kind of a weird thing to digest because we spent the last couple of years being like, God, these people are, as you call them, fringies. Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't use that for a long time. The fringies! The fringies. Yes! And, fringies! And we're like, well, they've been they've been quarantined to Tumblr. They've been quarantined to, to Medium. They've, they've been, been quarantined in general, so yeah. now they're extra crazy. Right. And they've been quarantined. Yeah, that's just it. And I think that has a lot to do with a lot of things going on right now. But they've been quarantined to these, these uh, ridiculous blogs. But now... This article could have very easily appeared on the Mary Sue, and it's been mainstreamed on Time.com. But was it like it's probably one of their like op-ed pieces that they bury and don't actually put in anything important? I don't think this is going to see print. No, I don't. Because <laughs> I, I doubt don't. it. Uh, but she goes on and on about Watchmen. Basically, it's uh, you know the way forward. Here we go. This is I think her point. Okay, I think I, this I was is waiting point. for her to have one. Yeah, there really isn't one. It's basically a bunch of uh, examples of of. You know, and we're not even really talking a whole lot about cops. We're basically talking about racism in, in superhero movies. And how we want to see more uh, non-white men superhero movies. Which that's is basically what it fine. sounds like. It's That's fine. But what does this have to do with, with uh, cops with capes? So here we go. Here's a way forward, uh, according oh to aspiring Mary Sue writer. If Hollywood is to do better in telling these stories, more creators of color need to be given the reins to tell them. It's worth noting that while Lindelof of uh, Watchmen employed a diverse writer's room, it likely took his name and Cache as the creator of Lost and the Leftovers to get such an ambitious story greenlit. Uh, while the director of Spider-Verse, Peter Ramsey, became the first black man to win an Oscar for animation, Sony initially approached the two white men who ended up producing the film, Lego movie directors Phil Lord and Christopher Miller, with the opportunity to make an animated Spider-Man. 
here's the thing though this is not unusual the, a lot of studios are afraid to take chances on things so they want somebody with a proven track record or ip that have a proven track record before they'll agree to it that's nothing to do with racism or any of that stuff i mean if you have someone goes back for it that has a lot more clout it's going to be it's going to go over better and you could argue in reverse that they're using their uh their privilege quote unquote to go and make sure you know these other people get the chance to go out there and shine yeah um so here's here's basically where it, it, it comes down to and this doesn't have anything to do with cops it has nothing to do with cops only when the creative freedom is encouraged and hollywood offers more opportunities to buy poc creators and white creators use their capital to support creators who are over oh, you just got done saying that was not okay yeah okay you just got done saying that how dare they go and ask these other people first when they use when they turn around and leverage their power to help other people and then you just got done saying that when white creators use their you know power to do something they were so only, they were. I don't know what her point is. It's just a bunch of buzzwords. Uh, only then will we get more superhero tales that accurately grapple with the complexity of justice in America. But there should be not. But according to your argument, there should be no superhero tales because they're basically cops with capes. That's not. That's, so what the hell is it? There, I've actually seen better written articles on the Mary Sue because her point. Her headline has nothing to do with her point. Right. Her I'm headline like, is about, you know, are superheroes just cops with capes? And the whole article is about racism and how, you know, at the end, you, you wrap it up with basically white superheroes bad, other superheroes that are women or, or people of color okay, um, and we need to let people that are white need to leverage their power to make sure more of these superhero movies get made. We just get done saying that it should be you know, superheroes are the same as cops, you know, oh, we probably portray, no, sorry, how we portray cops on screen. Well, I'm sorry, but there's a lot of cops that were in these shows that weren't white. So, um, including including Miles Morales' dad, a black man, he's a cop. It doesn't matter. Now that cops are now cop shows are being taken off, we need to look at and, and change. We have to look at the superhero narrative and change it too. It's basically the argument, but the argument doesn't. The, what she's arguing doesn't meet. It, she ends it in a completely different way than what she's arguing. So yeah, I, I don't. I don't. I think this is just clickbait. I think it's just clickbait at this point. It's like, what are the buzzwords? Superheroes, cops. Copaganda. Copaganda, protests, uh, race relations and entertainment. Well, Henry Cavill's been in the news about maybe come back as Superman, so we use that. Henry Cavill. Batman's in the news because of um, Michael Keaton. Uh, of course, the Snyder Cut. You know, all of these things are are problematic. Now, Wonder Woman, now she does she does praise Wonder Woman. It could be argued that Wonder Woman was kind of a cop too because she went all vigilante and Steve Trevor tried to get her to stop. Said, mm -hmm. you're not judge, jury, and executioner. But she thought she was. Um, and he actually tried to get her to stop killing the bad guy, you know, because she thought she was she was all that. But um Again, this is this goes back to everything when we're talking about voice actors, we're talking about anime, everything we've been talking about the last couple of weeks is if you look for problems, even the Golden Girls is offensive. Mm -hmm. And uh, now we're going to tear down superheroes and where does it end? It, it doesn't. As long as these journalists can keep kicking up outrage. Again, I just want to remind you uh, who actually is writing this article, speaking for people, mm -hmm. you know, of color. Um, you know, as long as these journos keep writing these kinds of articles and they keep getting paid for them as, you know, until the ad revenue dries up, we're going to keep seeing shit like this. I'm just floored that this is on time.com and not the Mary Sue. Yeah. So we're going to wrap it up. Yep. Okay. So please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. And we'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Hey guys, thanks for watching Clownfish TV. Please consider supporting the channel. Go to clownfishsupport.com. That's clownfishsupport.com. And if you want to join our community, go to clownfishtalk.com. That's clownfishtalk.com. Please subscribe, ring the bell for notifications. We will talk to you next time.